Grace and peace to you in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Hello everyone, my name is Eun Siu Kang. I'm one of the associate pastors here at Ricefield United Methodist Church. It is my great joy to welcome you to our worship service at the Vine on online campus of Ricefield United Methodist Church. We are truly grateful to have this opportunity to worship together. No matter where you are joining us from, we cherish your presence with us today. So it is our prayer that you will encounter our God in a meaningful way and receive a blessing that touches your heart and touches your life. As we continue our worship series on the fruit of the Spirit, today our pastor, Reverend Julia Hayes, will be delivering a message about gentleness. So let us open our heart and mind to receive wisdom and gentle encouragement through today's message. Now, let us prepare our hearts before God. Let us take a deep breath and feel closer to our Lord. Please join me now in our opening congregational prayer. The words will be shown on your screen. God, make us fertile soil. In this time of worship, till our heart so that we will grow your fruit. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. In our daily lives, keep us from striving, and instead, help us trust the work you are doing in us. We ask this in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Please join me as we pray together. Let us pray. Holy and loving God, we come to you this morning with gratitude. We come not as strangers, but we are your children. We thank you today for your faithfulness 
in your mercy and your grace. You are always there when we need you. You have never turned us away, and you have never failed us. Thank you, Lord, for all you have done for us. Gracious God, you are the true and perfect gentleness. But our world does not value gentleness. It values power over gentleness, and influence over meekness, and we struggle to even want to be gentle. It makes us feel weak. But you, Jesus, were gentle, and you call us to be gentle. So renew our minds and our hearts. Help us to think your thoughts and to reflect your kind and tender heart toward all. We want our conversations to be full of grace and our presence to be full of gentleness. This sounds so different from who we are today, but we trust you to continue producing your fruit in our life as we rest in you. So renew our minds and our heart. Lord, in this journey of transformation, we pause to lift up those around us who need your gentle touch the most. We pray for our community, our country, and this world. Pour your grace where comfort is needed, your warm touch where healing is needed, and your mercy where peace is needed. We especially pray for these whom we now name with our voices or in our hearts. Lord, in your never-ending mercy, in your great goodness, hear our prayers. Help us to see your gentle presence in all your world. We humbly offer this prayer in the name of Jesus, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil, for thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Let us now take a moment to offer our hearts and gifts. As we respond to God's grace and generosity with our gifts, I'd like to remind you that you can give to the ministry of Ricefield United Methodist Church through our website, smartphone apps, and via mail. Let us continue to worship God. friends, I'm Pastor Eun Seo. I'm so excited to have this time with you. Oh, wait, did you say hello? Okay, how about this? Can you give me your gentlest hello? On the count of three, let's say it as softly as we can. Are you ready? Okay, one, two, three. Hello. Great! Okay, so today we're going to talk about something special, as soft as a puppy and as tender as a hug. It is gentleness. Gentleness is a beautiful fruit of the Spirit, which means it is something that grows in our hearts when we follow Jesus. So let me tell this story. Let us imagine that you are holding a tiny and little bird in your hands. How would you hold it? Would you squeeze it tight? No, you don't want it. You would hold it gently. And um, because we, you don't want to hurt it and you don't want to scare it, right? That is gentleness. 
it is being careful with our words and with our actions so that we don't hurt any others. Now think about when someone is very upset, probably your friends or your sisters or your brothers. If we speak to them with loud and harsh words, will that make them feel better? No, it will not. But if we use gentle words, that will make them feel better and make them feel loved. That is gentleness. So we can be gentle by using kind words and by touching things carefully and by treating others the way we want to be treated with kindness and with love. In the Bible, it says gentleness is a fruit of the spirit. That means when we ask Jesus to help us to be gentle, he helps us to be gentle, just like him. Well, even though Jesus had all the power in the universe, he never used the power to be mean or rush. Instead, he was loving and he was kind and he was gentle. So let us remember every day we can ask Jesus to help us to be gentle just in everything we do. And every day is a new opportunity to practice gentleness. So are you ready to practice gentleness to your friends and your family? Okay, great. Let us ask God through our prayer. Dear God, thank you for teaching us about gentleness. Thank you for giving us the fruit of gentleness. Help us to be gentle like Jesus in our words, in our actions, and in our hearts. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Grace and peace to you in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I'm Pastor Julia Hayes. I'm one of the associate pastors here, and it is my joy to get to bring you our scripture lesson today. We are in the midst, actually almost at the end, of a season-long sermon series on the fruit of the Spirit. And as a part of that series, we are reading together each week the verse that this series is based off of, from Galatians chapter 5, verses 22 and 23. But the Holy Spirit produces this kind of fruit in our lives. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. There is no law against these things. And our specific scripture lesson today comes from the Gospel according to Matthew, chapter 11, verses 28 through 30. Jesus is speaking here. Hear now these words. Come to me, all you who are weary and are carrying heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me. For I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. This is the word of God for us, the people of God. Thanks be to God. Will you pray with me now? Holy and loving God, we, your people, are longing today to hear from you. God, I ask that in this time you would use me to speak to your people. Lord, whatever I say that isn't from you, let it be instantly forgotten. But God, anything that I say that is from you, let it sink and root deeply into our hearts. Lord, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts be pleasing in your sight, O God, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. One of the things that I've found most fun about doing this sermon series is that just about every week, whoever was standing in this pulpit and delivering the message felt that they in particular were probably the wrong person to be talking about the particular virtue. And that's no different with me when it comes to gentleness. But it especially hit me the other night when I was at the gym and I was listening to one of my favorite workout playlists. It's that one that I turn on when I know that I want to really push myself and lift heavier than I have before, meet some new goal. 
But because I was working on this sermon, I couldn't help but think about the gospel that my music was communicating. And think about how different that is from the sort of gentle gospel that Jesus offers to us. You're about to learn a whole lot about me and the kind of music that I listen to while I'm working out. No judgment. My playlist includes Christina Aguilera's song, Fighter, that has the lyrics, makes me that much stronger, makes me work a little bit harder, it makes me that much wiser, so thanks for making me a fighter. Or Eminem's song, Lose Yourself, that includes the line, success is my only option, failure is not, plus an expletive that I won't be sharing in this sermon. Or Britney Spears' song, Stronger, that says, I'm stronger than yesterday. Now it's nothing but my way. All of the songs that I was listening to emphasized independence and self-will, being able to make the life that you want just through hard work and grit. The gospel that these songs and that honestly so much of our culture professes is that if we work hard and try our very best, maybe pushing ourselves even beyond a reasonable limit, we will succeed. Of course, that builds on the tacit assumption of our culture that success is the most important thing that there is, and that success is defined by perhaps your income, or also the status of your job or other markers of external success. But all of this got me wondering, how well is this gospel, this gospel of work harder, go harder and stronger to succeed more, how's that really working out for us? Well, this week I found some really interesting research about teenagers in upper middle class communities. Now we typically think of at-risk youth as meaning those who are in low social economic positions. And that's certainly very real. But it turns out that there's also threats for kids on the other end of the economic spectrum. According to research from the American Psychological Association, youth in upper middle class communities actually have rates of anxiety, depression, and substance abuse that are one and a half times to two and a half times the national average. As I was researching, I found interview after interview with teenagers who talked about what it was like to spend 18 years trying to get into a good college. Seeing your peers as competitors instead of teammates, knowing that someone else's success could mean your failure. After all, there's so many open spots at each school and only so many people from each high school can be accepted. But it's not just our youth. A 2022 survey found that about a third of American adults are completely overwhelmed by stress most days. And 76% said that they had experienced a physical health consequence from stress in the past month. And this is definitely true in higher income households. Because the higher that you get on the ladder, the harder it gets to stop climbing. Your identity becomes more and more tied to the success that you've achieved in life up until now. And it's harder to develop authentic relationships. The same things that lead to success in business, like self-protectiveness and opportunism, make it hard to trust others and develop meaningful relationships. Plus, we've still been trained to see others, at least in part, as competitors. We want others to think well of us, and so we don't want to show a chink in the armor. We must keep going, keep growing, keep excelling. Isn't that why they say it's lonely at the top? Sometimes the people who seem the most successful on the outside are struggling the most inside. Here's how one Harvard student described it. I arrived at Harvard as a successful student who never slacked off, but as I outwardly checked off markers of a good, happy life Inside, I was all turmoil. I was terrified of not doing everything right. Schedule, schoolwork, social life, family, fitness, eating clothes, even demeanor. Everything had to be just so. Everyone believed I was happy-go-lucky. But the harder I tried to be perfect, the more my perfectionism became torture. Of course, in one sense, it worked out. 
affectation of effortless perfection got me into Harvard. Clearly, this gospel isn't working out for us. But the good news that we get from Jesus today is that there's a different way to live. We don't have to keep living under the burden of perfectionism, of forcing outcomes based in fear that we won't be okay. Jesus speaks to us today. Come to me, all you who are weary and carrying heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Apparently, we aren't the first ones to find ourselves with a burden too heavy for us to bear. Now, to understand this passage, we first have to understand what is a yoke anyway? To be honest, probably for the first 15 years or so of my life, when I heard this passage, I thought that when Jesus said his yoke is easy, it meant that Jesus likes his eggs the same way that I do, over easy. But that's not the kind of yoke that we're talking about here. The yoke that Jesus is talking about is a yoke that would be put around the neck of oxen to help them carry a burden, to pull a cart or a plow. In Jesus' time, two oxen would often be yoked together to pull something. Usually, a young ox would be paired with a stronger, more experienced ox. And that stronger ox would carry a greater amount of the burden, while the younger ox learned how to do the work and developed strength of their own. When Jesus tells us to take his yoke on, he's telling us to share the load with him. Now, the option isn't between Jesus' yoke or no yoke. It's between the yoke of the world that yoke of perfectionism and striving, or of Jesus' yoke. And what we've learned is that the yoke of our culture, it's not easy, and its burden is not light. But we have an incredible invitation from Jesus. We can take off that burden and let it go, and instead be defined by the things that Jesus says matter. So that brings us to what does it actually mean to live with gentleness? Jesus says to take on his yoke because he is gentle and humble in heart. The passage tells us that taking on Jesus' yoke means learning from him and watching how he does things. So we need to look at Jesus' life to understand what gentleness means. As I was thinking about this, I couldn't help but notice all of the differences between the way that Jesus understands his identity and the way that we in our culture have been told to think about our identity. The rat race, the constant performance that's found in the gospel of my music or in the culture around us is all about proving that you're worthy proving that you deserve a seat at the table, that you can best your competition. It's a sense of self that's built on external outcomes. It's about whether someone else approves of whether you are better than someone else at something. Maybe our culture has a particularly hard time with this, but it was still a problem in Jesus's time, and yet, Jesus seems secure. To help us understand this, let's look at the very beginning of Jesus' ministry. Near the beginning of the Gospel of Matthew, Jesus comes on the scene as an adult. This is the first time that we actually get to meet Jesus and that Jesus gets to speak for himself. And at this point, no one except for his parents and some shepherds and three foreign wise men have any idea who Jesus really is. To most people, he's just the carpenter's son. He's Mary and Joseph's boy. He hasn't done any miracles. He hasn't healed anyone. There's no reason for him to seem special at all. In that state, Jesus 
walks to the river of Jordan to be baptized. And when he comes out of the water, something like a dove descends on him and rests on him. And then a voice comes from heaven saying, this is my son, the beloved. With him, I am well pleased. Right after that moment, Jesus is sent into the wilderness and tempted for 40 days. The devil does his absolute best to get Jesus to abandon his true call. He tempts Jesus with power and influence. He taunts him, suggesting that Jesus isn't enough. But Jesus doesn't listen. I wonder how much of that comes from the fact that he has just heard the voice of God telling him that he is God's son, the beloved. Jesus knows that he doesn't need to work for the approval of anyone else, for anyone else's accolades, because his identity is already secure in the love of the Father. It's from that security that Jesus knows he can be gentle. When we're in a secure place, we're able to respond to the world with gentleness. We no longer feel that violent angst, that need to prove that we are better than everyone else to get one step ahead. We have peace to be gentle with ourselves and others because we know we have nothing to prove. As a first step towards this gentleness, I want to remind you of the communion table. Today in in-person worship, we're going to be having communion together, but I still want to extend to you the opportunity to receive communion at home, to perhaps even take a cup and bread and remember God's offer to you. When you come to the communion table, there are no requirements for entry. You will not be asked about your high school GPA or for a list of extracurricular activities. There is no advanced placement communion. Here, you will not be asked for references. You don't need five to 10 years experience and there are not limited spaces available. You don't need to jockey for limited resources. Here, you have the freedom to live gently because you are already secure. You are invited to this table because you are God's beloved. There's nothing in this world you could do to make God love you less, and there's nothing you could do to make God love you more. So come, experience this gift of security, and after you've been fed, Go out into the world to live with gentleness, knowing that your identity is already secure. Would you pray with me? Holy and loving God, we thank you for these words of Jesus today. They speak to our anxious hearts that are trying to force success in our lives. God, help us today to believe that you already love us exactly as we are, and that there's nothing that we need to prove to anyone else. We love you, God, and we thank you. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Our service will continue with Holy Communion. And so we invite you to get a piece of bread and some liquid so that you might consume the elements uh, with us. And so if you don't have those, why don't you hit pause on the video, go ahead and get those things together and come back and join us. Christ our Lord invites to his table all who love him, who earnestly repent of their sin and seek to live in peace with one another. Therefore, let us confess our sin before God and one another, praying together. Merciful, Merciful God, God, we, we confess, confess that, that we have, have not loved you with our, our whole heart. heart. We, we have, have failed, failed to be an obedient church. church. We, we have, have not done your will. We, we have, have broken your law. We, we have rebelled against your love. We have not loved our neighbors, and we have not heard the cry of the needy. 
Forgive us, we pray. Free us for joyful obedience through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. I invite you to continue to pray in silence. Hear the good news. Christ died for us while we were yet sinners. That proves God's love toward us. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. In the, In the name, name of, of Jesus Christ, Christ you, you are, are forgiven. forgiven. Glory, Glory to God. God. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And, and also with, with you. you. Lift up your hearts. We, we lift, lift them up to the Lord. Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It, it is, is right, right to, to give, give our thanks and, and praise. praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join in their unending hymn. Holy, 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 holy Lord, God of power and might, Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you, and blessed is your Son, Jesus Christ. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took bread, gave thanks to you, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples, and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, he took the cup, gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples, and said, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice, in union with Christ's offering for us, as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ, Christ has died. died. Christ, Christ is risen. risen. Christ, Christ will come, come again. again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ that we may be for the world the body of Christ, redeemed by his blood. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. This is the body of Christ, broken for us. This is the blood of Christ, shed for us. You're invited now to consume the elements that you have in your home. Let us pray. Eternal God, we give you thanks for this holy mystery in which you've given yourself to us. Grant that we may go into the world in the strength of your spirit to give ourselves for others. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Go today to live gently, knowing that you are already secure in the love of God. And as you go, may the spirit of the living God made known to us most fully in Jesus Christ, our Lord, go before you to show you the way, go behind you to push you into places you might not go on your own, go above you to watch over you and protect you, go beneath you to lift you up when you cannot stand, go beside you to be your companion and dwell within you to remind you every day that you are not alone, 
and that you are loved beyond your wildest imagination. Go in peace.